Hello everyone, it's been a while. Welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. So this episode, um, since it coincides with Persian New Year, spring equinox is in a couple of days. Happy March, happy spring. So we decided for this episode to feature a traditional Persian New Year's Eve meal, which usually consists of herb saffron rice and fried fish. So it's herb saffron rice is sabzi polo and fried fish is um, mahi, sabzi polo mahi. For good measure to make it a Persian surf and turf, I threw in a braised lamb shank, which I've been perfecting of late, some vegetables, some carrots for a healthy touch, and the crispy tadik, which, which comes from the bottom of the pot rice, uh, some of the goodness from the... Uh, braised lamb shank, and this is your perfect New Year's Eve meal. Happy spring, and if you stick around, I'm going to show you how to make this, and the recipes will be at the bottom of this post in the description. Let's um, come back and learn how to do this. steamed herb rice, fried fish, and a braised lamb shank. We're going to start with lamb shank because it takes the longest to make, two and a half hours in an oven, 300 degree Fahrenheit, except I'm making this one in my brick oven to add some character and, and flavor to it. You can do it in your traditional oven just fine. Um, so in order to make this dish, obviously we need to uh, wash and cut up the leeks and carrots, which are the main vegetables that go under the lamb shank. Uh, we're going to put the vegetables on a double sheet of um, aluminum foil uh, and then um, saute the shank on all sides about seven to eight minutes and, salt, uh, and apply salt and pepper to taste. Put the shank on the vegetables then we're going to um, pour the dry vermouth that we're using uh, in the same um, saute pan that we um, uh, prep the lamb shank in to dissolve and get all the flavor goodness, the brown bits that are left by the shank. We add the uh, garlic and, uh, um, and the tomato sauce and the saffron solution that we have prepped. Um, to this liquid and let it boil a little bit and then we pour all of that goodness over the lamb shank in the foil packet that we have prepared right we seal it up and put it in the oven at 300 degrees and let it slowly braise for um, two hours 15 minutes to two and a half hours now if you don't have a convection oven um, you have to turn the packet um, 180 degrees once every 45 minutes to make sure that it cooks evenly um, and then it'll be ready. Okay, at this point we have a couple of hours, two and a half hours while the lamb shank is cooking. So uh, we are brining our rice um, in a salt water solution. First we clean, wash out the rice and then uh, soak it in a salt water brine for a couple hours, up to three, four hours um, to get the rice prepared to wash. Then we're going to wash out our herbs and, uh, and clean them out, uh, cut out um, and take out all the thick um, stems and junk that you don't want in your food. So you need all the leaves and um, tender parts. Okay, so our herbs are fenugreek, uh, green onions or chives, cilantro, parsley, dill, or any other herb that you have tried and like in your sabzi polo. But these are the standard uh, traditional herbs. Then we're gonna chop up a couple of cloves of garlic and all of our herbs, 
as fine as we possibly can. There are machines that do this, but it's traditionally done with a knife by hand, and that's how I do it. So we're gonna chop all the herbs together as fine as we can do it. And, and then this herb's gonna go into our boiling rice shortly to make the sabzi polo. Now we're going to be boiling the water in a big pot and then our brined rice will be added to the boiling water. Um, we're going to boil the rice for about six to eight minutes until the grains of rice are al dente, have some hard center, crunchy center. That's when it's ready. Um, but about a minute or two before the rice is ready, we're going to add all the chopped um, herbs into the boiling rice and let it have a couple of spins with the boiling rice. So the herbs and rice are going to be boiling together for a minute or two. Then we're going to strain the hot water. We're going to strain the mixture of rice and herbs into a colander and run some cold water through the whole thing to make sure some of the um, starch comes out of rice. One of the differences between Persian rice and Japanese sushi rice or Chinese restaurant rice is that uh, the Persian uh, cooked rice, steamed rice, has some of the starch washed out of it. That's why the grains are so, um, so much larger and, and the texture of the dish is so, so different than Chinese or Japanese cooked rice. So there we, we let the rice and herbs sit in the colander for a few minutes. In the meantime, we're making our saffron and hot water mixture. This is how we get the maximum amount of flavor and color out of um, uh, ground saffron. So put some butter in the pot. We usually use the same pot that we boiled the rice in. We just clean it out. That's butter, um, vegetable oil, and then we add some of the saffron solution into the bottom of that pot and then let it all mix. And then swish it around to get um, the bottom of the pot and about a couple of inches up the walls, um, oily and greasy. This is so that um, the cooked rice, the, the crunchy tadik, will not stick to the bottom of the pot. That's how we pre prevent, um, or try to anyways, um, prevent the rice or potatoes or whatever you put in the bottom of the pot from uh, sticking to the bot bottom of that pot. I'm sprinkling some, some rice grain, some of the cooked rice grain, so that they'll sit between the potatoes and the bottom of the pot. That's one of the techniques that prevents the potato um, medallions from sticking to the bottom of the pot. Then some salt and pepper is applied to the top of those potatoes. And now we, the the um, stovetop is on medium high now while I put the rice and herbs back in the pot over the potatoes. Make sure that there is a little space around the rice and put some holes in the pile of rice. These are the, uh, the, uh, the vents uh, where the moisture is gonna come up from the bottom of the pot little trick that makes it work better. We put the lid on and give it a few minutes, three, four minutes, to see some condensation inside of the lid. That's why it's important, important to have a, a glass see-through lid for when you're making Persian rice. 
Then we have a mixture of butter and saffron, same saffron solution. We, um, we put some on the top of the rice and then seal with a uh, kitchen cloth or paper towel. I put the lid back on. We're basically sealing the pot to start steaming the rice. Then we'll lower the temperature setting to, you know, the three setting out of 10, whatever it is on your stovetop, uh, setting three out of 10. Now that we have the lamb shank going and the rice is steaming, we're gonna um, prepare our fried fish. It's basically um, sauteed, uh, uh, marinated in some onion, the saffron, salt and pepper. And then um, here it's uh, drenched in, in a coat of flour and fried in some vegetable oil. As simple as that. I'm using tilapia for fried fish today. You can use any favorite fish you want. The traditional fish for this meal is a white flaky fish. Tilapia, snapper, um, trout, whatever you can. What we got here. I think it's ready. It's been over two hours, 15 minutes. Come look at this. Look at this. Get, get through here. See that? See the boiling? Check this out. Ah, this is Persian um, portion, right?
there you have it. This is our Persian New Year, Persian New Year's Eve dinner. It's um, steamed saffron herb rice, which is uh, called uh, sabzi polo with fried fish, mahi, and we threw in a uh, braised lamb, uh, lamb shank. It's mahi che. So sabzi polo, mahi, mahi che, some crispy rice, tadik, some carrots to be healthy. Happy Persian New Year. And hope you all have a wonderful year ahead. Ciao.